Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we are going to fine tune a multimodal LLM. Okay, so this is going to be an interesting tutorial where we will try to fine tune Edifix multimodal LLM. So if you don't know what Edifix is, Edifix is an open source reproduction of a very famous model named Flamingo. Flamingo is the model that has been created by DeepMind. It's a closed source model that DeepMind uses it for uh, various purposes. Now, Hugging Face, a team at Hugging Face, they reproduced Flamingo and they created Edifix. Now, Edifix is available in two different weights, variants. We're going to look at the 9B, a 9B parameters, Edifix 9B. I already have created a video on Edifix earlier where I have shown you that how you can use Edifix for visual question answering. So if you uh, want to uh, upload some images and want to analyze and query on top of those images, you can use these kind of models like Adafix and there are other models like Lava, for example, a very famous model. Now, why this is important, why this video is important and why should you watch it and why should you focus on multi-modal LLM or if I make it a bit narrower, why should you focus on large vision models? Okay, now we have large language model. In 2024, we'll see more multimodal LLMs. There will be improvements, and this is not what I am saying. The entire community is saying that because recently Bill Gates was talking you know, with uh, Sam Altman, and Bill Gates asked a question that what are the changes that we will see in 2024 from the side of open AI? And then Sam Altman said that they are working on to improve the multimodal capabilities of their GPT models. Okay, GPT-4 and we'll see GPT-5 coming on soon. Now, with GPT-5, we'll have more multimodalities uh, capabilities over there. Like you can talk to video, you can talk to images, you can talk to perhaps audio also. You never know, right? So audio is easy to talk because you can get the transcription and again, you, you can use an LLM to do that. But videos and images and stuff, like they are some, some something that they are focusing on. Now, you should also know that how you can fine tune this uh, multimodal LLMs uh, mainly the because they have vision capabilities so we'll call it large vision models lvm and how we can fine tune with uh, techniques like lora q lora etc now this is the agenda of the video we will fine tune edifix 9b on a publicly available data sets of pokemon go cards so we have pokemon go cards i'm not a pokemon player i don't i don't have any information about those things but this is a data set that i found on hugging face and this is what they also recommend right now in the documentation that they have given. So we will take this data set from Hugging Face. It's an it's like a visual question answering. You can upload a Pokemon related card and you can ask questions on top of it. And it will try to see if the model is the fine tuned model is able to generate the answer or not. Now we are also going to push this to Hugging Face. So we can also use it later for inference purpose. There have been questions that how you can inference it. Once you push it, you can do it two ways. One is you use transformers pipeline to inference as simple as that. The other one is you can merge the LoRa adapters and you can also use it again through the same conventional way we have been, you know, we are either using auto causal LM or whatever to, you know, uh, from pre-trained to inference it. So there are two ways. We'll see how we can do that. So the agenda is we'll, you know, uh, download the model weights in Google Colab. I'm going to use a hundred GPU. You need that a hundred GPU to work with uh, this fine tuning task. You can either use run pod, Lambda labs or Google Colab. So I'm going to do this in Google Colab pro on a uh, hundred GPU. We will take the data set from hugging face. We will process transform the data set so it can fit into the uh, fine tuning process of Adafix, and then we will write uh, configurations for bits and bytes, LoRa and so on and so forth and then we'll fine tune. So let's start our you know experimentation of fine tuning Edifix 9B. All right, so to experiment uh, with Edifix 9B, uh, we are going to experiment in Google Colab. You can see I have connected with a A100 GPU. It says connected to Python 3 GC engine, Google Compute engine backend and this is the availability that I currently have. You can see disk of 160 or GB and RAM of 80, around 83 or GB. Now, these are the things that you need to install if you want to fine tune IDFX 9B. Now, the thing is that you have a data sets that you're going to do because we're going to uh, use this data sets uh, by the Fusion 21 that's called Pokemon cards. 
where you have an image as an input and then you have caption so the caption and image url we are interested in these two and it has 13.1k rows on hugging face right now now this is the data set that we are going to use a data set card for pokemon go you can see this is how the data looks like an image url a caption a name hp set name and they have explained that health of the pokemon set name the name of the set of the cards blah 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 right so this is something that will help you uh you know to learn multi uh, modal fine tuning this is a basic data set that you can take but you can also have your own data set which are similar to this let's install uh, here in this a hundred environment so we are using data sets then we are installing uh, the transformers thingy directly from git we are building it and then we are saying okay you install these libraries and utilities like bits and bytes that will help us load the model in four bits then we have sentence piece which is a uh, uh, dependencies of transformers uh, for that helps you with vocabularies and stuff then you have accelerate then you have lora lib etc now then you have hugging hugging face paved, uh, paved as well over here and whatnot right so let's use that this is uh, let me just have a look it says add uh, did not find branch or tag i just wanted to get this one but even that's not working then uh, uh, we will see we'll just remove this part from here and just install transformer from the source i just wanted to add that particular branch of it but it is fine now this will take a bit of time to install so let's wait for it and let's see how we can load the model the next thing is we need to, we need to import so import torch and i have said that i already have created a video on idfix 9b so if you want to use Redfix 9b in your uh, projects, please watch that video, how to do inference. Here in this video, our focus is more on fine tuning, how we can fine tune a multimodal LLM like Redfix. Now I'm gonna get pift. So from pift import, from pift we need LoRa config. So let's get LoRa config. And then we need get pift model. So let's get get pift model. And after that, you're gonna have PIL. So from PIL, you're gonna get import image. Uh, and then we need from transformers, transformers. I'm gonna import a few things. The fun is edifix. We can directly get edifix from transformers. It has a class edifix uh, for vision, edifix for vision text to text. And then we need auto processor, auto processor, and then we need trainer, and we need arguments, so training arguments, and then we also need bits and bytes config. So let's get that as well. Bits and bytes config. I hope this is done. Bits and byte accelerator, not accelerator. We're gonna need config here, and I think I also see that's wrong. That B should be capital bits and bytes bits and bytes config and i see there's a mistake in this import that should be data sets now once our imports are done the next thing is to load the quantized model so let's get the model in and i will first bind it to cuda so device equals i'm going to say a conditional there if to, if cuda if torch cuda is available lcpu now let's first get this now the checkpoint so let's define a checkpoint so the checkpoint equals and this is the idfix model so if you open and idfix is being created by hugging face m4 so it's a model by hugging face itself so if you write here idfix 9b uh excuse me that's a good rhyming uh hugging face if you just write hugging face emperor this is the repository that we're gonna use you can see it says uh, somewhere you will read text generation and then we'll also uh, read image to text multimodal and all right so that's why we are using it now let's uh, bring our path of model checkpoint now after checkpoint we're going to write the bits and bytes config so bits and bytes is an amazing library that helps you load the model in four bits and really helpful if you want to use qlora to fine tune a large language model if you are not familiar with all of these terminologies watch my video on llm fine tuning that's called 
uh, crash course of LLM fine tuning where I have explained everything in detail. I will give the link of that video in description. Now let's get bits and bytes config. Now in bits and bytes config, the first thing is load in 4 bit. So you're gonna say okay, load in 4 bit, and you can see it suggests you there uh, in the documentation. So the function documentation that you get load in 4 bit, and let's make it true. So uh, that is true. The next thing is. We're gonna we're gonna say also double quantization equals true true in this case. So BNB underscore four bit underscore huge double quant and I'm gonna say yes, make it true. You use that as well. Now what should be the quantization type? NF4, which is a data type. And if you want to understand more about NF4, normalized float, I think then you should also watch my that video that I was talking about where I've explained everything in detail. Now uh for uh bit quant type and then I'm gonna use NF4 in this case NF4 and what else we have then we have compute type we're gonna use float 16 maybe uh, let's use that so oh, oh, BNB 4 bit compute type yes compute D type the data type of compute and I'm gonna use torch dot float 16 we're gonna skip some modules uh, that because we, that cannot be quantized properly in this case so let's skip those so i'm gonna say llm and it has an 8 in it something that it, it, you can see over see it over here right it says uh skip modules yes and it's a list that you can define a, a different modules uh first is the head so let's use the lm head and uh, this embed tokens and this has come from the documentation of course of uh, the here now let's have our bnb config ready and once we are ready with our config we're going to use processor auto processor so auto processor equals auto processor that will help us get the model and you can see auto processor dot from pre trained and let's let's just do checkpoint and see uh, what it's what it does and you can see it's getting the tokenizers and then we'll start getting the uh, special tokens have been added in the vocabulary make sure the associated word embeddings are fine-tuned or trained now let's get the model in so what I'm gonna do here is let's do model equals and then it a fix for vision text to text dot from pre I, ho I hope I have imported this uh, it affects for vision text to text dot from pre train and here you write your checkpoint and with checkpoint you use a quantization because you are going to uh, load the model in four bits then you have to uh, define here a uh, quantization quantization underscore config so in quantization underscore config let's write bnb config this is right and then what else do we have let's have our device map so we have a CUDA here that's running so we have only one CUDA uh, but let's make it auto automatically decides it uh, if needed it can also offload but let's do that so device map auto and let's see if this works okay let me add few more cells And now this will take a bit of time guys because it has to download you can see it says downloading SART so it has to you know downloads all those things and we have to wait for all the model weights the SEP tensors that you see here uh, so let's wait for it and come back once it gets completed now you can see that model has been completed here you can see the model weights have been downloaded and now we can just print the model once you print the model you'll be able to see all the uh, like the entire pipeline of the model all the layers that you can see over here uh, that completely have been uh, printed now let's write a function for inference that will also help you once we fine tune it so let's write it inference and inference i'm going to write define or oh, let's write uh, do uh, like inference or something like this inside this i'm going to pass my model and processor image text not image text so we're going to have model processor let's then have prompts and then let's have a max new tokens and keep it 50 as by default so max new tokens and then keep it 50. now here uh we're going to have tokenizer so let me just get tokenizer equals and processor dot tokenizer 
we're going to use the same processor it fix uh, text to text and we're going to use the tokenizer from there and then let's remove the bad word thingy so let's have define a bad words where you uh, define some tokens like you have for image and then excuse me and then you have uh what else we can fake token around image okay so all the fake token around image and let's gonna close this and yeah that's the bad words now if length of bad words we can do a conditional checks over here if length of and let's make it small guys by the way length of bad words uh two, 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 uh zero let's see what it has given it says uh, bad word tokenizer uh, dot convert tokens to uh, probably not here so maybe let me just remove this now we have bad word ides and let's just use the tokenizer function and inside tokenizer i'm going to pass my bad words add special tokens and the but then again that will be it's too fast i don't want it to be too fast i don't want to be input ids perfect now this should do let's then have an end token so uh we should have an eos token so let me just do an eos token and then you have a system so says so this is how but this would need to be a string by the way sorry this would be any string and then uh us token id and then it goes tokenizer.convert tokens to id us token and then you define your inputs so now inputs equals you take your processor pass the prompts within that uh prompts so let's pass the prompts and after prompts you use return tensor and to return tensors or torch tensor and then you do dot to and use the device which is on CUDA now it will generate an ID so generated IDS so generated IDS equals model dot generate inputs and then goes your EOS token ID or let me just do it like this uh, EOS model dot generate the first thing is your inputs so inputs and then after that you have uh eos token id and then it goes it should be a list by the way so eos token id and then bad word ids bad word ids then you have max new tokens max new tokens and then let's use early stopping here for repetitions repetitions and also early stopping this should be a function yes early stopping true now this should do early stopping true now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to gen get the generated text here so generated text equals and then goes your processor dot batch so let's define a batch decode so batch decode and generated id is keep special tokens true and get the first one of it and then return the uh, or let's not keep return let's just oh you can keep return as well but it's fine uh, let's first print so print generated text we can just apply the function so print generated text yeah this is fine now define do infrared or oh, let's remove this we can directly apply this function so now this is fine let's run it it says invalid syntax so it gives you there's something wrong where is it wrong let's have a look and here it is uh, wrong now let's run it again and now it looks good the function is ready for inference maybe we can take some uh, for inference purpose but i don't want to uh, look at more on the inference thing here i want you to more uh, on the fine tuning but this function will help for the inference as well so you can just get an url or load it from locally as well you can also do uh, local load if you want to do that and i will request you to watch my previous video on edifix if you want to understand how does the you know uh, this working on uh, the local uh, images as well and whatnot so if you want that please watch that video so 
let's go back on fine tuning task of uh, that we have and for that we're going to use uh, fine tuning data sets that we were talking and this is the data set that we're going to use pokemon card so we have to write a, a function that will convert the rgb basically the pre-processing thing so let me just write pre-processing here and in pre-processing let's write a function so i'm going to say convert to rgb okay now this is the function that i'm writing and i'm going to pass my image so you'll have image in your data right uh, excuse me control j now you have your image you can take any other data now first is that we're going to check that so if image dot mode is already already like there's already an rgb then we don't have to follow this step like you don't use the function just return the image now else like if not there then image rgba equals image dot convert so i'm going to use convert rgba and then you have let me remove all of this for now image rgb and then have a background so background equals image dot new and for for this we're going to use pillow so this is a different image by the way now image dot new this don't get confused with the params input parameter image that you have you know uh, you have considered in the function this image we are getting it from the library of pillow now image rgb size this is right and then you would define 255 255 okay uh so 255 255 255 now after that uh, let me just remove this line we don't need it uh, now now but i mean we need that so we, okay that's right so we're gonna use image alpha okay to uh, image alpha dot composite image dot alpha underscore composite that's right where you pass uh so let me just let me just remove the image it might make it a bit confusing let's call it alpha composite and then it use image dot alpha composite background and then you give your uh, image RGB. Now the next line again is to convert to RGB. So return alpha compose. Not yeah, I mean we can do that. So let me just store this in a. We can just overwrite alpha composite, and then we can just return here, and then let's return alpha composite. Yeah, that's correct. Now let's write one more function. Uh, that will be transformation function to transform. So let's call it transforms. And here you can pass your examples in batches. So example batch, you have you will have thousands of images uh, in your data set. Now image size equals processor dot image underscore processor dot image underscore size. That's your image size. Then you need a mean. So image mean equals. Then again, you use the same image mean. Then you need a standard deviation. So standard size mean image standard. Now you're gonna use the transform. So let's use a uh, image underscore transform equals, and then you give transforms dot decode or excuse me compose not decode compose, and it's a function that can take n number of list and here i'm going to define convert to rgb at the first thing the function use the function or the pre-processing function that we have written convert to rgb then you're going to use random resize cop so all the augmentation stuff thingy for the transformation that we're going to use here transforms dot random and then resized crop and then you can use let's see image size uh, and then you have image size then you have your scale it skips you this error such transforms dot compose which is like didn't we did we have the transforms but anyway it's okay now haven't we imported transforms now that's the question it should from trans okay let me just import it i think it's a part of uh, torch vision so let me just get that so import torch vision uh, dot transforms as transforms now let's get that here and once you do that uh, let me remove all of this okay now uh, let's uh, get our thingy here so let's write that then we're gonna have so it's a function so in this thread let's write image underscore size let's write that 
then we have your scale which is, is a bit higher 0 0.9 to 1.0 and then again use interpolation these are all pre-processing step guys you know that you would have used in i don't know if you have used you would have used in computer vision as well sometime now enter uh it should show me transforms dot enter it's not suggesting me what's this name of the module interpolation mode or something like that and i need a i'm not sure about it let's see bicubic if that works just a moment yeah interpolation mode i hope it's right uh and then you use transforms dot two tensor and then you use transforms dot normalize mean and let me make it write it over here mean equals to image mean and std equals to image std that's how you define it and then you remove this part here now image transform is done let's have our prompt so prompts equal let's have an empty list for now prompts and then i'm going to say for i in range of length of the example batch which is a caption in our case so example batch and if you come here there's a caption so let's see it a caption if you look at the uh, data this is the data that we have taken and if you look at here this is a caption that we have so caption example batch caption this will act as a prompt now we split the captions to avoid having very long examples because this is i just wanted to show you the capability because the longer it is it will take more gpu ram for training right so not, not going to do that so let's do caption equals example batch underscore batch and then i'm going to write caption uh, example batch uh, caption and then you're going to give of course i because you have n number of and then you split that so it's split where you have excuse me where you have a dot to keep it a smaller length and then append so let's append that so prompts dot append and we're going to append and inside append we're going to have example underscore batch example underscore batch image underscore url and then you write i now goes here f question what's on the picture something like this you can set it what's on the picture or analyze the picture and then you get an answer so the answer basically a bit of you know giving an instruction kind of a thing that this is what you have to do but you can improve this uh, further example batch and then you give the name example batch name and then you can do caption yeah and i think that's what it is now this should do okay uh this looks good and then if you want to add more you can add it here so that's what it suggests now we are okay with this now so we have what else we let's see that so for okay now that is done so let's have our input so inputs equals and then i'm going to write processor and then you pass your prompts and then you give transforms transforms equals image transform that's what you're going to have here image transforms and then you have return tensor okay so return tensors equals pt and then you give dot two device and that's what you're going to do dot two device and then you just uh, get the label here so let me just do that inputs labels inputs labels and you're gonna do inputs inputs uh, not input by the way input ids and then you just return the inputs and i think this should do let's run it and see what we get here it says image transforms image transform not transforms now we have done that so now load let's load and prepare the data for fine tuning so load and prepare we want to apply the function load and prepare the data now let's have a data set that called ds and you want to use load data set from hugging face and load data set and you're going to give the 
this is the repository you can take any other multimodal kind of a data that you want to take it where you have text and images of visual question answering and those kind of things so here what i'm going to do is ds train and let's have a split size of that so train test split and let's keep a test size of uh probably zero like smaller one 0 0.02 very small uh, 0.02 as a test size and then you just do a train ds so train ds goes your ds train so let me just do that here uh, ds train and then you have train ds and then you have eval so eval evaluation data set then you have ds test and after that you have train ds and here you want to set transform so ds dot set transform and there you use ds transforms and then you eval ds dot set transform and then you just do ds transforms right now it's downloading the data and it has generated the train split that you can see uh, over here downloaded data extracted data files and all and it, it did now let's use the lora thingy so we're going to use the lora thingy over here uh, if you don't know what lora is low rank adaptation watch my video of uh, crash course of llm fine tuning where i have explained everything in detail now let's have a model name thingy over here so model name and i'm going to do checkpoint dot split which is right not minus one one checkpoint dot split and then let's write the config for it so config for lora goes lora config so let's define lora config over here and you do lora config and within this lora config you give r equals 16 and then you give lora alpha so lora alpha equals you give 32 if your model is small then your rank should be higher so these are all a uh, very tri uh, trial and error experimentation that you do to choose the right hyperparameter uh, for that so target modules for adfx your target modules would be q projection k projection and v projection at least q pros then you, and if you don't know what these things mean you have to watch you have to go and read the th theory before you come into practical now q pros k pros v pros after that let's have a lora dropout so lora underscore dropout and lora dropout is nothing but 0 0.05 and then bias none so let's do that and then you define this and then you load the model using get pift model so get underscore pift underscore model and then you give the model and then config of lora this is fine now if you print the trainable parameter it will show you that how many it will print how many trainable parameters are there so you do print trainable and then you use do parameters i don't know why it's not suggesting once you need it only you can see 0.22 percent not even one percent of the entire model you can see all params and the trainable parameters that we have okay now we're going to use hugging face trainer we'll keep a very small uh, steps i just want to show you that the capability of it and how to fine tune a multi-modal llm like edfx or even if you want to do with lava 1.5 you can do that let's write the training arguments uh, quickly so i'm going to do training args equals and you then define training arguments so let's define the training arguments and here we're going to do a a bunch of uh, listing the first is an output directory so let's define an output dir and you know again you should always do your model base model name and whatever you are doing with the uh data set that we have so i'm gonna call, call it pokemon uh pokemon cards or something fine let's call it let's make it a capital so pokemon cards now our output directory is done where we'll save the weights learning rate i'm gonna keep it 2e minus 4 you can also keep it probably 2e minus 5 as well if you want and you can see it suggests 2e minus 5 as the uh, recommended one in colab but i'm gonna go 2e minus 4 uh, and then let's keep it fe 16 you can also do bf 16 if you want to use that maybe we are on 800 but we can see 
and then you have per device train batch size let's keep it two batch size uh, per device and then per device eval batch size let's again keep it two as well then you have i'm going to keep number of training epochs here uh per train then let's have gradient accumulation that will help you with the gpu thingy memory and stuff uh gradient accumulation steps let's keep it eight then we have i don't know why it's so much obsessed with epoch i'm gonna use something called data loader pin memory to false and right now i'm only using a single gpu that too in colab and if you get an error i think you will need a bigger machine to do that maybe probably use a run port or something like that or aws says maker to do that now save total limit let's keep it three evaluation strategy and this is where you define the steps that this is what i'm going to define on as an evaluation strategy so evaluation strategy and then it goes steps and after that evaluation strategy you have a save strategy that how should you save your weights and i think that's also let's call it stra uh, strategy let's also call it steps then you have save steps let's keep it uh save steps let's keep it as uh, 1000 is too big because i'm only gonna do it for 50 and eval steps let's uh, gonna call it uh, 25 or something like that and then you have uh, max steps let's define your max steps so max steps equals it goes uh, 50 as max steps and then you'll also keep logging step after how many steps you should logging your loss ratio that you should see in your terminal or wherever you are running it i'm going to call it 10 as logging steps now max steps is done so max step is done what else uh remove unused column yes remove unused uh, unused column false uh push to hub right now we'll push it separately push to hub false push to hub false uh label name yeah that's important so if you look at label underscore names then goes your labels in a list so that's go as labels so let's get labels and uh load best model at the end yes true and then you report i'm not gonna use tensor board or uh, uh, or uh, weights and biases when the b i'm gonna just say uh report to none so it has something called report to none and then optimizer which is i forgot to get the optimizer so optim equals and i'm going to use adam 8 bit so paste underscore adam w and underscore 8 bit ah, i think this should do uh so this is our training arcs let's run it and see if we get any error here okay we didn't get any error now let's use the trainer from transformer so we're going to use trainer and I'm going to do trainer equals and just do trainer and inside trainer I'm going to pass model equals model so let's define a model a model equals model and then you define arcs equals ah uh, training arcs and oh so many things here training arcs equals training arcs and then you're just going to keep two things train data set and eval data set so train underscore data set and eval underscore data set now let's run this and just do trainer dot train once i do that it will take a bit of time you know it will take a lot of time to be honest and let's see once we run it it says edific processor dot call got an unexpected keyword argument transforms transforms okay this is surprising uh i think uh, and why didn't i get that error uh, over there once we were transforming that but i think i have made a mistake that should not be transforms i believe this it again transforms so bad my bad ah stupid thing to do but anyway let's again use that for the transformation and i'm going to use reload it model dot train blah 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 trainer dot train
and you can see the training has been started guys the fine tuning step that we have for 50 steps of course you can increase the number of steps but i just want to save some time I just want to show you the capability of how you can fine tune a multi-modal llm like edifix that too in google collab on a single a100 gpu on a data set that we have it from hugging face or that's called a pokemon cards data set now once we will fine tune it we'll also push it to hugging face hub so let me do one thing let me pause the video here and come back once it is done so you can see that our fine tuning steps has been completed but there are a few things that i would like to tell you i was do, uh, fine tuning it for 50 steps if you remember but i started getting cuda errors so i reduced the training steps to 25 because i think it was exceeding my uh, VRAM at that point of time so I just kept it only for 25 steps and refine tune it here you can see that I have to reduce the numbers over here on from 25 and stuff now we have got good training loss what I see is that if you do it for around you know more steps on your data set this model will perform really well uh, and you can see the training loss and validation loss over here on the screen now how do we do an inference so I have, so this is how you can do it. So let me first get an URL and I will gonna use this URL that I have. Let me put the URL over here. This URL that I kept it handy. You can take any other URL as well. You can see this is the URL that we have over here. Now you can also take other URLs like the some Pokemon's URL images that also you can take it. So I have one, uh, let me search that. So that was on uh pokemon pokemon cg dot io i have my notes with me and uh let's try it out if there's an image here two underscore hires dot png now this is this is also an image that we can take so probably let's take this one because this is more related to a pokemon so let's take this one because we have fine-tuned on that data a pokemon kind of a data pokemon card data so i'm going to use this image so this becomes your url now now once you have your url you can just and you did need a prompt so let me just do a prompt equals and then you pass your prompts here you give your url and then you give questions so let me just define the question if you remember this is how we set the uh prompt before our training arguments now what's on the picture let's ask like this because this is how we were expecting a system prompt something like that now answer and then let's run these prompts now this prompts hold my url and the question now what i can do i can use the do inference function so the function that we have written the do inference where we did not infer once we loaded the model but now we're gonna uh, do that on the fine tune one so processor and then goes your prompts and then it goes your max new token so by default it was 50 but here we're gonna make it like a bit bigger like 100 or something like that now max new tokens now let's run this and see what we get over here you know is it able to answer it related to that uh, pokemon stuff or not so that's that's the thing let's run it And you can see it says what's on the picture the answer is this is lucario gardevoir a basic pokemon wow uh, it got it it says this is uh, a basic pokemon card of type darkness with the title lucario and 90 hp of rarity blah 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 and we got the output uh, over here it generates the text and of course we can handle it max new tokens is 100 and what you can see the lucario or lucario whatever it is over here lucario hp 90 and it gets the it's able to answer it from that visuals of pokemon related images now this is this is fantastic isn't it now the next thing is how we can push it to hub as well so let's try to push this to hub so let me just see and later we can also use it or you can use it for your inference purpose or for your you know research purposes or study so let me just do push to hub so for push to hub uh, let me just uh, uh, first inst or log in to hugging face uh, cli but for that i need the access token so let's go to hugging face and let me go to settings and uh, access tokens and you need the right one so you can see i have a right uh, access token over here let's see if this works otherwise we'll take a different route now i'm going to do hugging face cli login and cli login will ask you to enter your access tokens let's see if this works now hugging face it's a utf8 local is required got nc uh, i have solved this is the problem 
uh, ATF is required. Let's see what it suggests. Uh, yeah, this one, this would work. So let's get this from here. I don't know what's the problem with hugging face nowadays, but uh, by the way, it's not a hugging face error. This this error is, uh, I'm again getting the error. Oh, surprising. No, I'm not getting it now. And it asks for the token. You give your token here and what happened? Uh, I'll say no. It says invalid token passed. Again, I will run this. I don't know why it's invalid. I think I did some mistake. So, ah, okay. It's invalid because we copied it, uh, the code there. Okay, let me just run it again. And once you run that now, uh, it will ask the token here. You hit enter. Then it will ask, I'll just do not as a git credence you. It says token is valid. Your token has been saved to root cache hugging face tokens and whatnot, right? Now, how you can uh, push it to hub is the uh, up to if you bring this here, you can see now we have an Edifix 9B Pokemon cards. If you expand that, you will see your checkpoint 25 because we fine tune it for 25 steps. Now you can see your uh, adapter model, the optimizer, your safe tensors and whatnot. We can also merge it with the PIFT. We'll see that uh, in a bit. Now let's do one thing. Let's uh, push that. So model and then underscore push to hub and then goes your F model name and then Pokemon cards. And then I will keep it. Let's do not keep it private because I wanted to give it uh, to the community so you can also try it out and find out your findings and how it works. Now let's uh, run this and see what we get. You can see it's pushing right now to uh, the Hugging Face Hub and once it push, pushed it there, you'll be able to see your uh, model right over there. And it says commit message upload model. You can also, of course, you can make it more uh, read image and all better. So if I go here and you will see, I just pushed a model, it affix 9B. Of course, you can, of course, create the read image over there. You can do it. But this is the model that we have pushed, SQMA 307, it affix 9B Pokemon cards. Now, once you click on files and versions, you will be seeing your adapter model or shape tensors and adapter configured.json. Now you can use transformers pipeline to load the model and work with it. You can do that, uh, but you will not be able to load this. So the thing is that you can also uh, merge that, uh, the LoRa adapters that we have, and you can also do that. But this is how you pushed it to uh, Hugging Face. And here is your fine tuning successfully that you know we have completed. That's all for this video, guys. I hope you now have enough understanding at how you can at least get started to fine tune a multimodal LLMs. I will have more videos on fine tuning multimodal LLMs. I am looking at the Lava and Flava. You know, Flava will do it uh, through PyTorch, and Lava will do it uh, the way that we have been doing it right now for Edifix. And there will be, there will be a couple of more videos on fine tuning multimodal LLMs. I am also working on an end to end. Uh, product development where we fine tune, push it to hugging face, deploy it on SageMaker and build a microservice or REST API kind of a thing where we can leverage that in a product. That is a bit lengthy video. I'm working on it. It will take a bit of time, but that video is also coming very soon. So these are on the cards. These are on the roadmaps of the videos and you'll see more videos on fine tuning multimodal LLMs. Now, if you have any questions, thoughts, feedbacks, please let me know in the comment box. You can also reach out to me through my social media channels. Please find those details on YouTube channel banner and YouTube channel about us. If you like the content, please hit the like icon. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel, share the video and channel with your friends and to peer. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.